Well, uh, good afternoon, students. Uh, this integrity uh, program is uh, meant for week eight. So we are uh, at the half point in this course. And uh, this chapter is chapter six, and it's understanding and critically appraising the literature review. When you read an article, a uh, research article, uh, the first thing that you read is the abstract, right? Uh, and that appears at the beginning of the research uh, report. And this gives you an overview or summary of what the study is about. Uh, and uh, it's a brief uh, summary about uh, somewhere between 100 and 250 words. Um, so after you read the abstract, you read the introduction that will introduce you to the problem that the research is concerned with. Uh, and then the very next heading that you will see is the literature review. So this, uh, this integrity recording will focus on what should be in the literature review and how do you, as a reader of research, uh, appraise or evaluate uh, the credibility and the usability of the research. So we have many objectives. Uh, discuss the purposes of the literature review in quantitative and qualitative research. Identify the sources included in a literature review. Differentiate primary source from a secondary source. Critically appraise the literature review section of a published study conduct a computerized search of the literature, read and appraise literature to develop a synthesis of the literature, and write a literature review to promote the use of evidence-based knowledge in nursing practice. So you will learn a lot from this exercise that you can use as you're writing your research uh, proposal, and you will also use it um, to um, appraise or evaluate the literature review uh, in the assigned articles for the critiques. So what is the purpose of a literature review? Uh, the literature review identifies both theoretical and scientific knowledge. Uh, it identifies what is known and unknown about the topic. It identifies available evidence for use in practice. Uh, and contributions of the present study to the knowledge base. Description of, uh, it may also include a description of a theoretical model or conceptual framework used in the study. Description of current knowledge of a practice problem. It will identify gaps in uh, this knowledge base and uh, we'll have a statement of how the current study will add to the development of knowledge in uh, that particular research area. So uh, the next uh, slide deals with the purpose of the literature review in quantitative studies. Okay, uh, And following that will be the purpose of the literature review in qualitative studies. So in quantitative studies, uh, the literature review will direct the development and implementation of a study. Right? It provides all the background. Uh, they will, the uh, literature review will cite relevant and current sources, um, document the background and significance of the study, and identify theoretical ideas to guide a study, document current knowledge on the problem. So that is quantitative, quantitative studies. The purpose of the literature review in uh, qualitative uh, studies. How does the qualitative nurse researcher utilize and conduct a literature review? So it's a little bit different with uh, qualitative research, right? In this part of a uh, research study report or article, uh, a qualitative study, 
um, the literature review will compare and combine study findings uh, with the literature. Right? Uh, it will explain, support, and extend research theory. It will document the background and significance for the research. Um, the literature review is a way to formulate research questions and as a source of data. Now, an important point about the qualitative um, research study. The review of the literature may not be cited until the end of the report. And that's because the qualitative researcher tries to avoid uh, bias in data collection, analysis, and in their findings. So here's a question for you. A researcher wanting to locate a conceptual framework to guide a particular research study would be most likely to find one in which of the following sources? A descriptive study, a dissertation, empirical literature, or theoretical literature? The answer, of course, is D. What are the typical sources included in a literature uh, review? Oh, let's see. I think I want to go back to this question. Okay, I have a few comments I'd like to make here. So the theoretical uh, literature, uh, we said that was the answer. Um, and examples of theoretical literature would be um, Broy's uh, adaptation model. Um, in one of your courses, you have probably uh, uh, discussed uh, the nursing theorists. Um, so uh, Callista Roy developed the uh, Roy adaptation model, and this looks at adaptation as a, uh, as of central interest to nursing. Uh, another nurse theorist is uh, Dorothea Orham, uh, and she developed the self-care theory. Uh, and this views self-care, self-care deficits, and uh, nursing systems as the central view of nursing. So what are some typical sources included in a literature review? Uh, periodicals and journals, internet publications, monographs. Um, a monograph would be focused just on one particular topic, whereas a journal would have many articles in it. Uh, encyclopedias, we don't use encyclopedias very much. Conference papers, uh, conference papers are uh, presentations of papers uh, that have been uh, condensed and put in a publication uh, for proceedings of the conference. And this may uh, help you identify uh, some research studies that have not gone into uh, publication yet. Uh, master's theses, doctoral dissertations, um, books and textbooks. Um, books and textbooks might be useful for uh, historical research, uh, but not for uh, quantitative or qualitative research. So um, if you are um, citing something uh, in the literature review, Look to see um, if the author of the article that you're reading uh, has made proper citations. Uh, when you quote a source, you need to paraphrase the content, right? Uh, you cannot take the exact words of somebody else and use them as your own, right? You have to, you need to paraphrase it, and you need to. Uh, make sure that you attribute uh, that paraphrased content to the person who originated it. Uh, if you don't, it's called plagiarism. And plagiarism is uh, unethical and uh, can be a, uh, a very serious academic offense. So um, if you are 
paraphrasing someone, you might be uh, using content as an example or in support of a position. Every time you cite someone in the literature review section of the paper, you must have a corresponding reference or citation in the reference list. And uh, you must use API uh, style manual, the American Psychological Association style manual. Uh, I imagine that you have that um, publication. I believe it's the eighth edition right now. Um, every five to ten years they revise this, so you need to know which is the latest. You can also go um, uh, online to get some uh, examples. Um, so what you what you need to focus on is proper um, uh, citation of sources in the text and also at the at the end in the reference list. So what are two types of sources? Primary sources and secondary sources. Primary sources are preferred. Uh, this is something that has been written by the person who conducted the research, right? Uh, or written by the theorist who developed the theory, right? The primary source. It came from the person who actually uh, wrote about it uh, or developed it. And secondary sources uh, are um, a summary or paraphrase uh, the works of researchers and theorists. So, for example, um, you're writing a paper and uh, you note that uh, someone has written a literature review uh, that contains uh, one of the authors that you want to use uh, and you don't go back to the primary source. If you quote that um, intermediary person, the secondary source, it's just not as strong. You always want to go for the primary source. Okay, That means that you uh, have to have a lot of energy and a lot of interest uh, to make sure that you do your literature search through the databases and keep, um, keep at it. Keep trying to find the primary sources. And if you need uh, the assistance of a librarian uh, we have librarians uh, at the Stokes Library. You should get to know the librarian. They can really help you a lot. But you need to know what you're looking for. What questions are important uh, when critically appraising literature reviews? Uh, so to evaluate uh, the literature review critically, you want to say whether or not this is useful, right? Look to see if the primary sources have been cited in the review. And are the references current? When we say current, we mean in the last five years. So this is 2017. You can go back as far as 2012. Um, is the literature review broad in scope? Um, and that is usually um, ascertained by the number of uh, studies that are included. Um, have uh, relevant uh, studies been identified and described? Um, are relevant theories identified and described? Uh, relevant landmark studies included? Uh, so your textbook talks about landmark studies, right? And it talks about uh, seminal uh, studies. So uh, a landmark study uh, would be uh, an original study uh, that is done and that it was really a breakthrough and um, changed people's thinking about some particular concept. Okay. Um, are the studies critiqued? So you don't want to just list it. 
you want to look and see if there's some aspect um, that um, needs to be mentioned. For example, they didn't include such and such, right? Or they included um, too much of something. So with the uh, critical appraisal uh, of the literature, you are evaluating the quality of the resources. And you are trying to determine, are they credible? Are they reliable? Uh, what type of sources were used? We talked about that. Was the study published in a peer-reviewed journal? If it's uh, published in a peer-reviewed journal, uh, you know that the um, the manuscript that's submitted to the journal has gone through a blind review. So the reviewers don't know who the author is, and the author doesn't know who the reviewers are. So there's no conflict of interest there, um, and the reviewers uh, kind of have a checklist of things that they go through. Uh, and um, there's also some double checking of the references. Uh, can the references actually be, f be found in the literature? Uh, seminal uh, studies. Uh, actually, this is the first study in a particular area that changed our way of thinking. All right, And the landmark studies are other major breakthroughs. Um, so the quality of the sources again. A primary or secondary source, has the research study been peer-reviewed by a journal? Uh, does it meet the sta their standards for quality? And um, seminal study, landmark study, and replication study. So in a replication study, um, this is a repeat of another study that was done. Okay, uh, And they tried, in the replication, they tried to determine whether the findings of the original study can be replicated, reproduced, can be found consistently in different settings and with different subjects. So um, if this is done, that strengthens the um, findings of the original study. They considered very credible. Uh, other uh, questions uh, to ask when you're critically appraising or evaluating the literature review? Uh, are the sources paraphrased to promote the flow of content? Uh, we don't want to use direct quotes, uh, or if you do, um, use them sparingly. Uh, and there's a special format for that. Is uh, current knowledge about the research problem described? Does it identify gaps in the knowledge base that uh, provides a basis for study? Uh, is the literature review clearly organized, developed logically, and is it concise? Right. Uh, are strengths and weaknesses of studies described. Um, is there a summary of the study uh, and its findings? Uh, has the author included implications of the findings for practice? Uh, and are quality resources used? Are they credible? Are they reliable? So all the references uh, must be checked for authenticity. Uh, what components might the nurse research uh, researcher uh, include in the literature review? Uh, what is known and not known about the topic, the focus of the study, the sources have to be current, published within the last five years, landmark studies may be included if essential to the background of the problem. Uh, what sources would be suitable for a literature review? 
Well, you would use your academic library. Here we have the Stokes Health Science Library. Uh, so any academic library at a college and, uh, or university. Uh, special libraries uh, that may be found in hospitals. The Sigma Theta Tau Center for Nursing Scholarship. Uh, interlibrary loan. Uh, sometimes uh, the Stokes Library may not have a particular journal. Uh, you want the article, uh, you have to pay for the interlibrary loan, uh, but let's say that uh, George Mason University has it or Georgetown University has it. Uh, Stokes Library can put in a request uh, for the article uh, and it takes a while but uh, it can be transmitted uh, and uh, you will have the article. Um, on an online search uh, and public libraries. So let's talk about the use of electronic databases. Um, I know that you have done some of this before. Uh, I think it's really important that you get to the Stokes Library. I know you're very busy. I know you are probably working full time, um, but it's, it's just wonderful to get to know the library and have some context there uh, so that you can efficiently do uh, your searching of the literature. So um, we're talking about which databases are suitable for nursing and allied health reviews. You are maybe familiar with CINAHL. CINAHL stands for Cumulated Index for Nursing Allied Health Literature. Uh, so this is definitely uh, one of the databases that you would like to use. And we'll talk about how you do the search in a minute. Medline is another one, but it includes, it's a huge uh, database, but it includes um, biomedical and health related uh, topics. Ovid is another one. Uh, it uh, contains uh, 26 nursing journals, and often the number of articles uh, or editions that they have, many times it goes back into the 1950s. So um, Ovid is a very good uh, database. I like to use CINAHL and Ovid. Um, you can also obtain full text articles. Now sometimes uh, if you find an article that you like, it it may only provide an abstract, but most of the time it has a way to click on the PDF and you can print out the full text article yourself. Uh, EBSCOhost has many journal articles, but it also has mobile access. So I know you like to use your uh, smartphones and uh, this might be something that you could do. Science Direct, wonderful. It has, uh, gives you access to uh, 4,000 journals. Now the Cochrane Reviews, this is um, special. The Cochrane Reviews is a British publication and the only thing that's in it are um, evidence-based research articles and they uh, um, rate them as to their quality. So um, if you work uh, in a uh, quality control committee, you're probably very familiar with Cochrane reviews. Um, probably should have added uh, another one, uh, PubMed. PubMed is uh, focused on the lay public, but you can you can look at that and get familiar with it. But the point is that there are different databases and they focus uh, on different disciplines or readers. Okay, So remember CINAHL and Ovid uh, and ScienceDirect. What is the primary purpose for reviewing relevant literature? Delineate the existing knowledge base of an identified problem develop conceptual and operational definitions of variables, 
interpret previous research findings, or select a research design. Okay. So A is the answer. The literature review includes what is known and not known about the study problem. So here is uh, an example of the a screenshot of the CINAHL database. Okay. So if you were looking for something on social support, right, you could select a field like nursing. Okay. Um, the review of the literature section will include a theoretical model or a conceptual framework used in that particular study, a description of the current knowledge of the practice problem, the gaps in the knowledge base, and the contribution of the present study to the development of knowledge in this research area. If a conceptual framework is used, it would be in the literature review section. So, um, when you're doing a um, search of the databases to find literature on your particular problem of interest, um, it's important uh, that you do the search um, wisely. So the keywords uh, are major concepts or variables of a research problem or a topic used in um, searching a database. It can be a single term or a phrase. Um, most databases have a thesaurus uh, that can be used to identify keywords. And each keyword used should be listed uh, in a written search plan. Uh, that is, if you're trying to keep track of your um, searches. Okay. So a keyword is uh, a label for a topic of interest. So back here, you see there were a couple of terms. One was social support. Another is coping. Okay. But it could be anything that, that uh, is a keyword for your area of interest. So uh, using keywords uh, is very important uh, to help you narrow the search uh, in terms of the number of articles uh, that you will yield from this search. It will give you a, a list of articles uh, that relate to your keywords. Uh, but Using keywords will help you prevent uh, getting way, way too many, like 900 articles, uh, because you used um, too many keywords, or the keywords that you used were too broad. Um, so, um, for example, um, if you're interested in um, colorectal cancer screening, Okay, uh, let's just say you put in cancer screening in older adults. Okay, now that's pretty broad, right? So I would get all the articles written about all kinds of cancers and their screening. But what I'm really interested in is colorectal cancer screening. So putting in just those keywords will narrow down the search. Uh, it will put um, uh, limits on the search. What might the nurse researcher uh, record from the search? Um, uh, the name of the database that you used, the date of the search, the exact strategy, th those keywords, the number of articles that were found, uh, the percentage of relevant articles found, uh, and this information can be stored in a table or an Excel spreadsheet. Um, also, there's RefWorks, uh, and RefWorks will help you keep track of um, your references. And I'm going to refer you to the Stokes Library homepage if you want to know more about uh, RefWorks. So, Okay, this is 
the same. Okay. Okay, let's just say you are here and um, you notice in the search op options that some uh, limitations have been put on the search. Okay, They want them to be published within this uh, time frame. In, in this case it was 2005 to 2009. We also want them to be English language and we want them to be a research article. Okay, So here the results yielded 449 articles. Now uh, if we didn't put the publication years in, right, we would get <laughs> so many. Look at the results, 1,300. Okay, so this gives you an example of how you want to use the right keywords uh, to delimit your search. So uh, you can limit the search by uh, limiting it to the English language, the publication dates to recent years. Uh, you can limit it to papers that are research. You can also limit it to uh, just give me the articles that the, the references for those that will give me full text articles. Now, your textbook says this can be risky um, because uh, you may be missing some important studies that don't provide full text articles. Okay? So, um, depends on your, on your situation. Um, I, I usually don't limit it to full text articles. Um, peer reviewed publications, yeah. We've talked about peer reviewed. You understand what that means, right? So, uh, let's assume that you've done the search. Um, and you've found, oh, let's say 30 articles, uh, what do you do next? <laughs> read your abstract first, right? Uh, read those abstracts from the articles to help select the ones that are of the greatest interest to you. Um, and be sure to obtain full text articles. Uh, it may be just a matter of clicking on a PDF um, and then printing or it may invo involve uh, further work of yours uh, on your part to try to find uh, the uh, actual article. But you want a copy of every article that you include in your own literature search, uh, literature review. What sources can be utilized when searching the internet? Uh, search engines uh, provide the means to search the internet. Some are better than others. Uh, Google Scholar is an excellent search engine. Uh, university libraries provide a good uh, a list of good search engines. And you may find information on the internet uh, that is useful uh, to your topic. Which of the following indexes would provide the largest number of relevant nursing sources? Okay. Um, A, the Cumulative Index to Nursing and Allied Health Literature, CINAHL, uh, would be the most uh, relevant uh, and largest number of nursing uh, sources. What are the advantages and disadvantages of obtaining information on the internet? Well, one advantage is that the information uh, is more current than that found in books. Uh, books are anywhere um, from three to five years. Uh, the information is three to five years old by the time uh, it's printed. Um, the disadvantage is that the information is uneven in terms of accuracy when you're finding something from the internet. Um, so something like Wikipedia, do not use that, right? 
Uh, there's no screening process for information put on the web. Uh, it's important to check the source of any information obtained on the web to judge its validity. Many times uh, topics uh, that you might uh, just Google, right? Um, look at who, you'll find something and then look who's sponsoring it, right? Uh, if it's the National Library of Medicine, if it's the American Cancer Society, if it's the um, um, Association for um, Neurological Diseases, Al Alzheimer's disease, something like that. Um, those are, are credible websites. But if the website is trying to sell you something, a product, uh, you have to really have a jaundiced eye regarding the reliability of that information. That's an important point to tell your family members too because sometimes they think if they see it uh, on the internet that it's credible and reliable. And remember, if they're selling you something, um, don't take it at face value. So what does the researcher include in the synthesis of the sources? This takes time. You need to compile the findings from all your selected studies. You need to analyze and interpret the clustered findings about your topic and you need to specify the current state of research-based knowledge. What are the steps in writing a review of the literature? I will refer you to your textbook, Chapter 6, to see Box 6-1, which uh, provides a checklist for a literature review. Okay, and you can use that as your uh, as for your assignment on critiquing uh, the two articles that you have uh, as assignments. So a purpose of uh, writing a review of the literature is to document current knowledge of a selected topic and indicate findings ready for use in practice. Uh, the, Review of the literature uh, section will be outlined in this way. First, there's an introduction of the problem. Then there's a, a description of the empirical literature. And then there's a summary in which uh, you provide a, a summary statement or statements that indicate that you have analyzed it and synthesized it. To, that you are now able to provide in crystal clear format, what is the importance of these findings? What are the key findings? What are the steps in writing a review of the literature? Um, search for articles using the electronic databases. Obtain a uh, full text copies or PDF of the articles you select, read the articles, comprehend the articles, highlight important points. You can use that with a highlighter. Um, analyze the content. What is it? What's going on here? What's what, what exactly is being said? And then synthesize the main point having read all these articles what is included in the introduction. Uh, the introduction indicates the focus or purpose of the review. It describes uh, the organization of the sources. It indicates the basis for ordering most important to least, earliest to most recent, and then various categories as they relate to your uh, literature. What is included in the database literature? So in the review, uh, it will include uh, quality studies that are relevant to your topic. And for each study uh, in the review of the literature, 
uh, there will be a sentence that talks about the purpose of the study, the sample, the sample size, the design, and specific findings are presented using paraphrasing rather than direct quotes. Okay? It's scholarly, uh, but a brief, they will, it will contain a scholarly but brief critique of the study's strengths and weaknesses. What is included in the summary section of a literature review? A concise presentation of research knowledge about the selected topic, what is known, not known. A judgment stating whether there is adequate knowledge to direct change in clinical practice, or there is not adequate knowledge to direct change in clinical practice, and your study or the author's study is needed and will add to the body of knowledge because they have demonstrated that there is a gap in what is known. And uh, a brief statement of the proposed change in practice. All right, so this concludes uh, chapter six. Um, this will be posted. I'll post the PowerPoints and the Tegrity. Uh, and I urge you to contact me regarding uh, the critique assignment or the uh, draft research proposal. Okay, I'd like to help you so that you uh, don't spin your wheels and waste time um, and that you're efficient. All right, this concludes our integrity. Thank you. Bye-bye.